There are three things separating the tone you have from the tone you want. I'm Tobias Murphy, and this is Murphy Music Academy. As I mentioned in a recent YouTube short, the three things that have the greatest effect on your tone are the speed, pressure, and sounding point of the bow. And if you're a subscriber and you didn't see that short, then you're going to want to hit the bell button so you don't miss any of my future videos. And if you're not a subscriber, you know what to do. Now, back to the subject at hand, it might seem to be a very simple thing that where you place the bow, which is what we violinists call the sounding point, and how fast you move the bow and how much pressure you put on the strings would affect the sound. and what I'm trying to get you to understand in this video is how to use those three factors to get the sound you want. And the key is understanding the hierarchy of sound production, which goes in this order, speed, sounding point, and then way down here, pressure. And since the last shall be first, let's start talking about that last one, pressure. The one that most of you, if you are still a student struggling with your tone, are probably very guilty of abusing. You see, with a bowed string instrument, we are always in danger of snuffing out the sound while we're making it. If I were to pluck a string and then touch it again, I will snuff out the sound because my finger has now stopped the vibration by touching it. But the bow here is always touching the string while making it vibrate. So if I press too hard, I am in danger of dampening the vibration while I'm making it. Which, by the way, is one of the reasons that student violin sound sounds like student violin sound, even after several years of playing. So how do you go about fixing this? Well, one of the first things you can do is just acknowledge that you don't have to press the bow so darn hard into the strings. Something you want to learn to do is to be completely comfortable with just the weight of the bow. One thing I like to have my students do is to place the bow about here, hold it with two fingers, the thumb and the middle finger, and then just pull the bow across the strings with no added pressure. By itself, the bow makes a perfectly decent sound. Once you're comfortable with just using the weight of the bow, then you need to start using pressure only to fill in the cracks in the sound that are left by using bow speed and sounding point. It is only there to even out the weight of the bow across the bow stroke. Because the frog is so much heavier than the tip, we're going to need just a little bit of pressure as we go through a down bow in order to even out the sound. I'm very light right here, and almost making the same sound as And I'm just doing the tiniest bit as I go across the bow stroke in order to keep the sound even. And really, aside from a few edge cases, that's all you need pressure for. Even within those edge cases, you're not going to be using as much pressure as you think. Let's talk about speed now. When it comes to controlling dynamics and tone quality, bow speed needs to be the first thing a violinist looks to. If I want a big forte sound, the most important thing for me to control is a fast full bow. Now, you might be thinking, yeah, I already know this, I use a lot of bow to play loud and a little bit of bow to play soft. But not exactly. For instance, Microphone issues aside, even though I'm not using as much bow as in the example previous to this one, I'm still using a not insignificant amount of bow, and yet I'm not producing as big or brash of a sound. In fact, in spite of what you might hear in this rather boomy room, my tone's timbre and volume are quite soft. What you'll notice what I was doing was playing very lightly and moving the bow much closer to the fingerboard. Using a lot of bow as a default and then adjusting the other two aspects of sound production is a way that you're going to guarantee producing a very beautiful and resonant sound whether you're trying to play pianissimo or fortissimo. So with pressure we want to use as little as we can get away with most of the time and with bow speed we want to use as much as we can get away with most of the time. But what about that? Last factor, what about sounding point? Well, this 
is what's going to tie those other two aspects together. This is what unlocks your tone's full potential. As I mentioned before when playing the Bach, I was using as much bow speed as I could get away with when playing those notes, and as little pressure as I could get away with when playing those notes. So what I did to temper the sound was move the bow much closer to the fingerboard. You see, at different sounding points, the strings are going to resonate in different ways. For instance, if I play my open A string right next to the fingerboard, it's a different sort of sound than if I move a little closer to the middle, and then even closer still, and then to the bridge where the sound basically taps out. Now, none of the sounds that I just demonstrated are either bad or good, but you have to decide whether what you're doing is appropriate or inappropriate depending on what you're playing. For instance, on general resonance for lower strings and lower positions, I'm going to want to keep the bow basically in the middle. Um, And you'll notice at the end, I actually changed the sounding point in that shift. Right? Because that transferred the type of resonance that I wanted a little bit better than if I had stayed right in the middle. Versus... So in that instance, it was the sounding point that brought out the best aspects of what I was doing with both the bow speed and the pressure. Now, as I said before, we want to use as little pressure as we can get away with most of the time. But there are times when we want as big and powerful of a sound as we can possibly muster, and this is another place where sounding point is so important. For instance, take this passage from Symphony Espanol. Right, if I try to hit that top note anywhere but this little area right next to the bridge, it would not have the same effect and often would have a a much creakier, scratchier sound. But if I hit right at that top spot, right next to the bridge, with as much force as I can muster, then it works. Learning how to properly combine pressure, sounding point, and bow speed is what's going to keep your tone consistently resonant, whether you're playing pianissimo or forte, intensely or sweetly. Master this, and you'll start to notice that the gap between your tone and your favorite violinist tone is going to be a lot smaller. Now, this is going to take a lot of experimentation on your part to truly implement, but to get you started, I'm going to give you some basic ground rules. Rule number one, you're going to want to be playing with as only as much pressure as it takes to even out the bow weight, as much bow speed as you can get away with, and keep the sounding point generally right in the middle. Rule number two, if you need more sound, always start with more bow speed. If that doesn't work because you've already maxed out as much bow as you can use without getting messy, then you want to start slowly applying a little bit more pressure or maybe moving the sounding point a little bit closer to the bridge. Now, most of you are going to be experimenting with this, so don't do too much pressure at once or move the sounding point too much at once. You want to make sure that how much you're using on either sounding point or pressure is going to perfectly match the amount of bow you're using. But let's be honest, if you use more bow and the piece gets messier, then it's probably not because you've maxed out the amount of bow you can use, but because your bow technique just needs to get better. And as for the third rule you need to follow, as you get into higher positions, you must get a lot closer to the bridge. You see, the reason we pluck over the fingerboard and not over the bridge is because there's a lot less tension on the string right here than compared to here. Now that works great for pizzicato, but does not work so well for bowing, especially in higher positions. This is true even if you're playing something very soft. So start using these guidelines to help you do a lot of experimentation in your own practice time, watch a lot of your favorite violinists to see what they do, and before long you'll have a tone and a control of sound that before you could have only dreamt of. Anyway, I've been Tobias Murphy for Murphy Music Academy, always here to remind you that there is no pleasure in mediocrity, and I want to hear from you, did this advice help improve your tone? Now you're going to have to start working on it for a while, but I think you'll start to see some improvements right away, so if you watched the video and tried this stuff out, please come back and comment below. Happy practicing, and I'll see you next time.